Look, I'm just a geologist. I like rocks. I love rocks. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Geology Flannel Cast. My name is Steve. Hey, I'm Chris. And I am Jesse. Welcome, and welcome, welcome. We've got an action packed episode. I know I'd probably say that every week that we have an action packed episode, but this is, this is more of an action packed episode than the past action packed episodes. So we are. <laughs> That's a lot of action. There's it's, a lot of action with this one. It's, it's a history lesson. This is. This is a. It's very good, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> Um, you you got to get your well, cricket thing back. I know. I, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We got Jesse's theme song music first, and then we'll get the, yeah. the crickets back. But um, that's a throwback to the uh, the old school listeners. Um, but all right, anyway, so let's uh, let's start off paying the bills, and then uh, we'll get into the meat of the podcast. How's that sound? Sounds delicious. Did you say this- meat or mead? <laughs> mead of the podcast. I like it. Mead. I said meat, oh. <laughs> but we were just talking about mead before we pressed the record button on this. So, just nice. still got this uh, mead on the mind. Mead yeah, on well, the mind. Well, speaking of paying the bills, we'd like to thank Formatting Formula for sponsoring us, as always. Um, formatting Formula, formattingformula dot com for all your word document formatting needs. Uh, I also got a text from the Formatting Formula today. Uh, George, I'm not going to say his last name, but George reached out to the formatting formula via our podcast. So thank you, George, for supporting the formatting formula. Um, and he, he wanted to know that we don't say it enough or basically ever. Um, <clears throat> if you need to get a hold of the formatting formula, if you like, if you need to email them, you can email them at support at formattingformula.com. If you ever want to check out any of their videos, it's youtube.com forward slash c forward slash formatting formula they have word formatting videos on pretty much anything you could even possibly imagine and old formats new formats um you know i'm not going to embarrass my embarrass myself and talk about you know word seven <laughs> whatever, whatever we're at now word seven word seven <laughs> i looked about- it up before i think seven was like in the DOS age. Yeah, I, I think, yeah. <laughs> I, I basically only know seven words. So um, <clears throat> I, don't know why they, I don't know why they have me doing all the ads for the formatting <laughs> formula when I keep messing it up every week. But uh, check them out, formattingformula.com. Any, anything you need from something simple, like I need to figure out how to get this figure in here or orient it, or I need to go from uh, you know landscape to portrait and then back to landscape. Like th- those... I remember when I was doing my thesis, I was told like, well, it can't be done. I was like, well, that doesn't seem right. But, you know, it's something where you like insert a page break or something. I don't know. Again, I just keep watching the videos when I have to figure it out. <laughs> or, or I just call Formatting Formula directly. So <clears throat> please check them out, formattingformula.com, and make sure you tell them the Geology Flannel Cast sent you. Steve, I just imagine that you have one of those red phones on your desk that's a direct, <laughs> a direct line to the formatting formula. You don't know how many times, like, I'm at work and I'll be like, oh, this is so silly. Like, I, I don't know why I can't figure this out. And I just type in an email, like, how do I do this? And it's always like, just do this and then this and then this. And it's like, oh, that's it? Like, yep, that's it. So they're, they're always very responsive. I, I love them to death. So check them out. All right. Um, actually, we didn't talk about this before we started recording. Do we have? Are we going to do news stories today? Um, executive decision right now. Let's jump right into our topic. Man. Yeah, you seem you've been talking all day to us. Yeah, all day. Chris <laughs> has been texting us back. Oh, this is going to be a humdinger, boys. <laughs> he's, he's been up for wow. seventy-two hours straight. <laughs> yeah, just, just on a coffee binge like you've never seen before. Just, yep just chug it on this no we've uh so we've been getting uh geez now we've been getting emails for a while saying you know hey guys can you revisit the geologic time scale you know can you, can you jump back into this and we did a geologic time scale podcast i don't know eight years ago or whatever with the 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 the, the first iteration of the podcast and you know i we did an all right job 
but we could have done better. There is room for improvement, all right? And I think we, with that one, I don't even remember. It was so long ago. But I think we just kind of talked about the dates and things like that and some things that, that went on during those time periods. But, you know, we didn't really talk about how this happened. Like, why do we have a geologic time scale, right? Does that sound about we, right? We did geologic time scale in August of 2015, so five years ago. Five years ago. All right. Yeah. Do you have the outline from that episode? No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, that's what I thought you were looking at. I thought you were going to go through the outline. We used to have outlines for these episodes back in the day when we were. <laughs> now we don't. So now yeah. we don't. It's, we've just gotten so good at this that we don't yeah. even, we're just like, you know, forget the outlines. We're, we're good. We're good. No, um, I actually, I just have a spreadsheet of what episodes we did when. Oh. So. And Steve. I, I've been neglectful because it's only filled out up to episode 50. Because we're on episode um, 59, 50, right? 59, 59, yeah, yeah. Good, dude. So, um, <laughs> Bill and Ted's just came out. Yeah. I'm yeah, just... yeah. Are, are they doing that in movie theaters? Or is it Both. Just... Movie theater yeah. or downloadable. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I, I guess well, AMC is starting, they're opening up their movie theaters again. I thought I heard. Yes. Like some kind of 15 cent night. Yep. Well, they did say, um, they, I just saw a thing, we're getting sidetracked, but like um, the spread, the, like transmission is sort of low if you're not talking. So once again, not talking keeps you out of trouble. <laughs> and like the, the rate, the risk of transmission goes up if you're talking and then it's like super high if you're shouting, hmm. obviously, which well, makes sense. You're, you're spitting. Yeah. Right. So, you know, maybe uh, being in a movie theater sounds problematic to me, but maybe not if everyone's sitting there quiet. Yeah, sitting there wearing a mask. I don't know. I, you know, I'm not a health professional. None of us are health professionals. So maybe not listen to anything that we say that's outside <laughs> of the geology realm. That's or, a good point. Yeah. I mean, you know, take it or leave it. Use it at your own risk. Um, so what I got people planned for- ease. Putting people at ease. That's- take it or leave it at your own <laughs> risk. <laughs> that's what we do here at the geology final cast just, <laughs> just listen to our soothing voices i talk about- you should if you're listening to this now you should tune in you should check out our our youtube page to look at the video of this and uh because chris has a notepad he's just itching to get to <laughs> <laughs> he does, he does yep. keep waving it in the air <laughs> Oh, it's pretty awesome. Notes and the, the pages are starting to fall out of the, the, the theme tablet or whatever these things are called. So I'm hoping it lasts this episode. Anyway. Theme, theme tablet. No, did I was you go to Catholic theme. school, buddy? I actually did. In the I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I don't um, know what that means. <laughs> it's loose leaf? No. Oh, you never called yeah. it a theme tablet? No, loose, loose leaf? Loose leaf, but like, a, like, what do you call this thing? A legal pad. A notepad? A notepad? Mm-hmm. Right, you know what? I don't need this right now from you guys. All right. No, well, there's different a legal pads. Semantics. Semantics, yeah. Yes. Sorry. All right. So what is our what is our you know, first of all, thank you for our patrons. We actually have a bunch of oh. patrons listening today. So thank you for listening live while we record this awesomeness. Um, the Patreons are multiplying. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone that, that sponsors uh, the podcast and helping us try to get some new equipment to just make this podcast bigger and better, baby. Yeah. yeah before, before we started, uh, Chris's microphone went out. My computer froze up. My computer we're, froze up. Yeah. We're, we're, we're doing awesome. Yeah. Steve's microphone's crapping out right now as we speak. Yep. Mine is. Yep. Yep. And we're hanging on by a thread. Oh, Literally, that's perfect. Time. <laughs> Steve needs a better microphone. So this is, this is everyone that is a Patreon sponsor is, is helping us out. We're going to be getting this, this new equipment. Um, it's actually really expensive for us. These microphones. He's, and Steve's got the, the, the best voice of us all here. So you're missing, you all are missing out. Yeah, Chris right. doesn't agree. No. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> Steve has a golden voice. He does. Steve should be on radio. But <laughs> I have a face for radio. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Steve, your volume's r- pretty low. Uh, yeah, you put that thing up to your face. <laughs> Again, what? <laughs> yeah. Where can find earlier? I don't I, I, I don't know what's going on. So, anyways, thank uh, you for the Patreon uh, supporters out there. Um, we'll get Steve a new microphone one of these. Um, 
<laughs> okay, there you go. All right, let's let's yeah. get moving on. So, anyways, sorry about that. I got a little sidetracked. We will edit that out for the um I don't know, maybe I won't. Uh <laughs> so, <laughs> depends. Depends how busy of a week I have this week. Um okay. So the topic for today is the <laughs> just <laughs> I just seeing Steve stare at this microphone, just trying to figure out. <laughs> All right. Why are you doing? Why are you? I'm it's doing the train. Yeah, it is. You know, I'm going. I'm going. Uh, I'm taking it off the stand. I'm going handheld. Okay. While well, Steve's trying to fix his yeah. microphone right now, the yeah. topic for today we're revisiting the geologic time scale. Like I said, we've been getting emails about this over the last few months. Like, hey, you guys should should do this kind of. We, there's been a there's been a pretty good demand for us to revisit this topic. So, the people asked, and we will. I don't know. Provide, I guess. Hmm. Anyways, we get the the whole, and this is going to be more of a like what Steve said, the history of the geologic time scale. We're not going to be talking about like numbers or you know how long ago things happened. This is kind of like how did how did all of this come about? Speak for yourself. I'm going to just go through every stage. <laughs> Doc. Yeah. Well, we were when we were uh, texting about this earlier this week. Jesse said that he was just going to get like some obscure stage from <laughs> from a time period and just really focus on that stage and. We're going to talk about the plus and the minus of, of the, the ages. and Yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll see if he does that or not. I'm going to call out his bluff and say that he's not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> going to cause me to open more tabs. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. There's a couple different ways to do this, all right? Um, so, I guess first disclaimer, this we're basically going to hit uh, the Paleozoic era hard and the Mesozoic era hard little bit on the Cenozoic era and kind of ignore Precambrian time. Now, now, before everyone starts jumping down my throat about how important Precambrian time is, yes, I agree that Precambrian time is super important and often gets overshadowed. I'm so, going to say that makes one of us. Please, let's forget about it. <laughs> Today's the day the Precambrian times we get overshadowed. We'll have to do a, um, I would like to dive into it more and, um, Really, really jump into pre-Cambrian time. Yeah, we have um, actually a couple of friends of the podcast who study the pre-Cambrian, so maybe we could bring one of them on. Have another guest, huh? Have another guest and talk, talk, talk a little early, early dirt, early rocks. I like early it. rocks. Yeah. So, um, okay, so how I have this set up is there's a couple of different ways you could attack this. But I think the, the simplest thing is I'm going to kind of start this off in chronologic order, right? Um, so, I thought you weren't going to. No, I'm not talking numbers, but I'm just going <laughs> to. talking about the time scale. So carry on. Well, I, I mean, okay. this is just what I did, all right? If you don't like it. I'm, all right, I'm, I'm just sorry. thinking now, too, I really should have pulled like an Allen Iverson there, like. Cambrian. Talking about Cambrian, not the Cambrian. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Ordovician, the Precambrian. Precambrian. <laughs> anyway. So let's dive. So all this was pretty much going down in the late 1700s and, and early-ish 1800s. These early geologists were looking at these grouping of rocks, and I guess they were grouping them together, for lack of better. <laughs> Should have thought about that one before I said it. <laughs> they were finding similarities between them and... Yes. Grouping them based on these similarities. Thank you. That's, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Peterson. That's why I'm here, folks. That, that, uh, that heavenly voice of his. <laughs> so, start off with the Cambrian period. All right. So these these are going to be time periods in uh, in, the, in the during the Paleozoic era. Um, so, what did what, how did the Cambrian Paleozoic mean? Paleozoic means uh, ancient life. Paleo meaning ancient and zoo, zo, zoo meaning life. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the Cambrian period. Let's start off with this uh, Cambrian period. So one of the things that the geologists noticed in this, and we're, we're talking, you know, this is, this is basically the, the baby days of the geolo of just geology. Geology is, hasn't really, as a science, hasn't really been around as long as like chemistry or physics has. Um, geology kind of saw its um, its start in in like the late 1700s, really. So um, 
the Cambrian period is known for a, there is a, all of a sudden there's a sudden explosion of life. Right? We started to see um, things like uh, skeletons, uh, teeth, and basically hard parts in, in animals start to start to evolve, right? And, and geologists started to, to notice that in, they saw that in the rock record, all right? Um, so the Cambrian period, basically all of the major phyla that are around today developed during the, the Cambrian period. Do you, um, <clears throat> are you gonna talk about where the name Cambrian comes from? Do you want me to tell a little history there? Sure, I mean, I got the, the history. Oh, you, so You go for well, it, then. this is all, this is your show. Well, I don't want it to be the, the Chris show today, but <laughs> you go, I mean. Oh, uh, yeah, no, if you're gonna get there, I don't wanna steal your I just, I was the next bullet point. <laughs> so the Cambrian was named for, no, I'm just kidding. It, so <laughs> a lot of these early There's, work. I saw two, maybe we could talk about this. <laughs> I'm Ooh. cutting him off. Shit. There's two, two stories, I, or two very similar things that I read about where the name Cambrian comes from. So let's see what you say. Well, I mean, <clears throat> it comes from Wales. It's, it's the ancient name yes. for Wales. Cum, like modern day Wales, <clears throat> uh, Cumbria or Cymru is, is Welsh. Uh, and so Cambria is sort of the ancient name for Wales. So, um, <clears throat> and the major sort of area of coal mining um, in, in Great Britain is in, is in Southern Wales. And so you have these coal mines, in especially the start of the industrial revolution. So the coal mines are popping up all over the place. And so you have these early sort of natural scientists, early geologists going into the coal mines and to move the coal, you need canals. <clears throat> and so you get canal building going on in, in this part of Great Britain. And so they're cutting down through these layers of rock and that's where they're seeing a lot of this, this fossil, fossil layers. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. What were you, was I? <clears throat> no, that was one of the things. So I, I found a little discrepancy. They're pretty, they're, they're pretty close. So it's nothing like major, but um, yeah. So it was first, the, these Cambrian rocks were first studied on the Harlech Dome and uh, adjacent Welsh terrain and geologists named the, Cam uh, the system Cambrian after the Roman name for Wales. So that's, that's what you said. But then I found something else. Um, you guys know who named the Cambrian period? Was it, uh, <clears throat> was it Hutton? Oh, you're close. Adam Sedgwick. Uh, Sedgwick. Sedgwick. Um, these names are going to keep on popping up because it was just like, it's kind of like the, uh, the all-star team of OG geologists that started to develop these names for these time periods. So Sedgwick is a guy who's, he, his name's gonna pop up. And I got a funny little, well, not a funny, sounds kind of silly, silly, silly little anecdotal story about this uh, Sedgwick guy. But uh, Sed Adam Sedgwick was, a, um, yeah, it was, he was an early geologist. Um, so I'm another story. story. I love a good Sedgwick, Sedgwick segment. Yeah. Uh, his, uh, so this also, uh, the other thing I read was that Sedgwick named Cambrian after it was um, the name of an ancient tribe. Yeah, and that's, that'll pop up here a lot <clears throat> in these next couple. So years. it was an ancient tribe from Wales. Yeah, and same yeah, with, yeah, same with um, the Ordovician and the Silurian. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Sorry. So. Um, Not Sorry. That's, uh, that's kind of the rundown of the Cambrian period. Yeah, and the, the Cambrian, and then we're going to talk about the Silurian. Well, we're going to kind of group the Ordovician and Silurian. So that's the, next, the two next periods that come after, after Cambrian. But um, so... You're just going to lump them together? Well, there's a story behind where the Ordovician came from. I'm excited. I, you, I don't know this story. Whoa, wow. I mean, I know it was there, named after the, like the ancient tribe, the, the Orda... Or to Vichy or to or to Vite or to V. Oh, blanket. Yeah, I got it here. Oh, I don't have the name of the tribe. So, well, let's let's not uh, take <laughs> the cart before the horse. All right, <laughs> let's let's stay in a nice orderly, systematic, right, right, sorry, uh, manner here. Jesse. This is what you should have stopped me. You should have said yeah. no. <laughs> Loose cannon, Thornburg, right now, just <laughs> really <laughs> shooting from the hip right now. Uh. <laughs> All right. So 
let's uh <laughs> so i'm going to lump ordovician the, the next two periods after cambrian i'm going to lump ordovician and silurian together all right i'm going um, to just state my objection to that right now but i want to go ahead let me hear your objection it's a democracy I mean, kind of yeah i mean i i don't know to me and this part stems from some of the work we did but man the ordovician is really interesting and i feel like it gets overlooked a lot. There's a big biodiversification event. There's a mass extinction. There's actually two. There's a glaciation. Glaciers, yeah. yeah. Glaciers, sea level drops. There's a sea major go war- crazy. There's a warming event. There's an ocean anoxic event. It's everything's happening. But anyway, lump them together. <laughs> <laughs> God, he looks so depressed when he said that. <laughs> lump them together. I carry on. <laughs> well, I was... I mean, we hit a nerve right there. I wasn't expecting Thornberg to go off. Like, I'm running on very little sleep. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, so originally, there was no Ordovician period. It was Cambrian, your, basically your Cambrian grouping, and then your Silurian grouping. There was no Ordovician. But really? it, yeah, yeah. Huh. Um, eventually, I got this whole story, and um, oh, geez, my notes go a little out of order here but let's just see where this goes all right um so there ended up being this argument that broke out over (laughs) where the cambrian silurian line was all right we'll get more more on that but just kind of like spoiler alert there's gonna be a little bit of drama and we'll there'll be a some things will come about because of that drama because they don't they were they were not sure where they should have draw, drew the line between Cambrian and Silurian, right? But eventually, after geologists kept on looking at this and they started to realize that this like disputed time had enough characteristics of its own to be given its own time period. And that's where Ordovician comes from. They're like, you know what? The, uh, there's a section... And it's, it's, uh, it doesn't go, there's a, a whole other grouping of rocks with everything that Jesse just said going on around the, uh, that, 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 that boundary between Cambrian and Silurian. So let's call that time period the Ordovician. And once again, I think with Jesse's spoiler alert here. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Ordovician, the name of that comes from another Welsh tribe. All right. Yeah, but how cool is that? That they, they, They're having an argument, well, we can't, can't draw a line here for Silurian. Well, we can't draw a line here for Cambrian. And like you know, just, they had this argument. Well, because of this, and then because of this, and then because of this, and it's like, oh, well, crap. I, I guess all this stuff in between, what we're saying is Silurian, what we're saying is Cambrian, has its own set of characteristics. Like, yeah, talk about the scientific method being proven out. Like, that's, yeah, that's that's, just that's cool. good. Good science right there. Yeah. It is. Oh, I mean, you know, obviously we're looking for Monday morning quarterbacking now and uh, looking at yeah. this from an altitude of 30,000 feet. It's uh, at the time, it was a very, very heated debate. All right. And some people's feelings got hurt over this debate. Oh, uh, yeah. So save I, the drama for your baby mama. All right. I, they're all wearing three piece suits <laughs> oh, man. on the, on the, on the rocks arguing about this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, Let's go. Let's skip over for a second. Well, not skip over. Let's move to the Silurian for a second. All right. Let's talk about the Silurian. Because remember, there was no order vision at first. It was just Cambrian and then Silurian. Uh, the Silurian was named by Sir Roderick Murchison. All right. And this dude was a wealthy Scottish aristocrat. So he was uh, just kind of doing his thing. That's, uh, I think that I feel like that was like a geology back in the back in the early 1800s was like a hobby for, or it was like a science for wealthy people. Wasn't that the case with a... Uh, yeah. You basically had time and money to burn. That must yeah. be nice. It was gentleman, kind of like gentleman scientist. That's like... Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. It's my, my dream. existence. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what was... Okay. So, here's, here's the cool thing about the early days in geology. If you were like one of the original geologists these guys made some pretty big discoveries and they're all like friends with each other. Um, so just kind of a fun fact about um, Sir Roderick Murchison. He's buddies with a guy named Reverend William Buckland and Reverend William Buckland uh, is famous because he described the first dinosaur, which was a uh, megalosaurus. Oh. So these guys are all, they're all buddies and they're all trying to, trying to figure, figure out this, uh, get this geology thing going. 
All right, so um, the Silurian period was named after an ancient Welsh Celtic tribe called the Silures. So once again, kind of kind of Celtic. Sim- Celtic tribe. Do I say Celtic? Like the Boston no, Celtics? No. <laughs> <laughs> but thank what, you. What does it matter? That's a little pronunciation. It's, yeah, it's the thought that counts there. Um, <laughs> not a linguist. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I'm the last person to be giving enunciation tips here. Especially with our Philadelphia accents. Like, yeah, right. Well, what are you guys doing tonight? <laughs> <All right. Yeah. clears throat> I mean, I do say milk, so. Milk, yeah. That's, that's, well, that's, that's weird, like. Sorry. Pennsylvania thing. I don't know. Yeah. That's my coal country thing. Yeah. It's Appalachian roots. Um, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. So let's get back to this whole drama about the Silurian, um, the original Cambrian Silurian boundary, right? So Murchison and Sedgwick were, they were friends. Right, hence, like the similar naming strategy for these, uh, for these uh, time periods. All right, um, and and actually, in 1835, Sedgwick and Mer- Merchinson they wrote a paper together. Here we go. This sounds like a real, this sounds like a um, real riveting piece right here. It was called "On the Silurian and Cambrian Systems, Exhibiting the Order in Which the Older Sedimentary Strata Succeed Each Other in England and Wales." That wouldn't. That wouldn't float in today's uh, today's. I kind of want to. I kind of want to write like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and talk about like commanding a room, like ooh, yeah. <laughs> that, that. Oh. Um, and so this this paper that Sedgwick and Murchison wrote together, quote, and I'm, uh, it became the germ of the modern geologic time scale. So I oh. guess I never heard of the word germ used like that before. Like germinate? Yeah, maybe germinate. Yeah, that's okay. Once again, not the linguist over here. <laughs> um, all right, so here's the deal now. So we got this goes from Cambrian to Silurian. And over time, the Silurian period kept getting pushed back more and more into Sedgwick's Cambrian period. Ooh. I just dropped my notes. That's, <laughs> that's how riveting this was, all right? There, uh, Sedgwick's like, yo, 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 wait, wait, this is my time period. I don't need you coming here and taking this over, oh. right? And Murchison's like, yo, man, I'm just showing you what the data's telling me, man. And there was a tift, and the two stopped being friends and stopped speaking to each other. What? Yes. <sighs> yeah. Did they quit their podcast for four years, too? Um, <laughs> we didn't have a tiff. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, we didn't have a tiff. Did we? If we did, I missed it. No, yeah. Uh, <laughs> was I, I should I apologize? Was that, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um anyways, let me get my notes. Drop my notes over here. All right. I got very upset about that tip. I don't like hearing these things. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so and uh so they, they couldn't figure out the time boundary then eventually you know people started looking at this and they're like oh holy crap guys there is actually a whole nother geologic time period in here let's call this port of vision and that's where that comes from so that's crazy uh, yeah yeah fun little uh fun little story there i did not catch who named the port of vision period i mean aside, aside from the falling out and them never talking again that's a interesting little story yeah, there's science is filled with these things. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys got anything about the uh, or division or Silurian you'd like to add? Any little fun? Ad- I guess he had a little knowledge bomb he dropped in the beginning of that segment. Yeah, there's just a lot going on. I think it's, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. No, I'm done with it now. Okay. And, and again, <laughs> well, just, just to point out too, all of this stuff was done without time associated to them yes correct yeah, i think that's, that's a great point steve anything to do with time it's just this is the fossils these are the things we found here and these are the things we found here and we're drawing a line between these things and these things because they're at some point they become two different. There's just groupings right yeah so this was way way before 
what, probably 250 years before we started dating things? No, no. Uh, dating came out in 1896. Or I, I should, no, 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 no. I don't know. Let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase. Nope. The discovery of radioactivity came out in 1896 that's <laughs> <laughs> woo. <laughs> yeah we we i don't know the exact history of of radiocarbon dates but yeah it's um you're looking at early to mid 1900s 20th century right we're talking yeah, about so 17, this is 100 um, well yeah we're talking like the end of end of the 18th century going into the early like yeah. basically this all for the most part a lot of these stories were happening around the 1830s the first radiocarbon oh, okay. date was 1949 and uh willard libby won the okay. nobel prize for it so oh, yeah. 100, How about 150 that? years not 200 yeah yeah, yeah you're right. okay yeah. Yeah, it was close <laughs> Was, I mean, in geologic time, you were spot yeah, on right? it. Nailed it. Plus now, was, nothing. <laughs> was that the first type of radiometric age dating? Was carbon dating? That's a great or, Was there another, like, were they doing, like, uranium lead or, like? That's a good question. Um, no, was... it looks, oh, it looks like, well, so it looks like um, Ernest Rutherford uh, proposed it. In the early night in 1905. Okay. Um, it, I don't. It the first mass spectrometer was built in the 1940s. So probably, that's pretty impressive. They were building mass spectrometers in the 40s. Yeah. Like it must have been the like an entire. It must have been like several rooms for that one. Oh room. yeah. I don't know. You know, I'm just gonna stop talking. I don't. I can't. I don't know enough to talk about mass spectrometers, but. <laughs> I mean, it's probably pretty, they're pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, I, cool. I took a spectrometry class and master's class in college you, did you you took it too right i didn't take that class. no jesse no no yeah. uh dr, dr. freel oh yeah, yeah. We, i mean yeah kind of went over the history of things and the stuff they were doing in like the 30s and 40s was ridiculous yeah pretty crazy like yeah i so. do i I'm, I'm trying to think if it was a mass spectrometry mass spectrometer when I was at Penn State, in the basement of the one building, the, one of the professors who had since retired um, had some of his original apparatus in the basement still up, and it was just like it was a whole room. Um, now he wasn't—he was looking at oxygen, oxygen inclusions in micro diamonds, but he was doing this. Wow. Like, micro diamonds 50s and the 60s yeah and it was kind of crazy um he was good friends with gene ulmer ah oh, gene yeah. ulmer rest in peace yeah. yeah friend of old friend of the podcast yeah, yeah. good guy yeah. all around good guy yep. yeah very, very smart man yeah anyway. anyway all right yeah so so we went from cambrian solorian they had we're doing this fight. all just by looking at the layers of rocks looking at the fossils mm -hmm. looking at yeah. the rock types yeah right so next we come up to devonian and so some De sandstones are going to come out to be De devonian yes it's again <laughs> it's very good i'm sure uh biggie smalls is rolling over in his grave right now uh, first of all that was biggie smalls sampled that from duran duran but did he yes oh, i didn't okay wait really I yes oh gosh <clears throat> I was just living it, listening to Duran Duran yesterday. I was listening to the song Rio. That is a really great song. <laughs> yeah. I do the like bass, the, I like their venture into pop culture here. <laughs> 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 the bass line in in uh, in Rio is just like wow, that's a oh, real yeah, the, great bass line. The bassist from uh, from Duran Duran has like a a, a <laughs> Facebook page where he like goes into how they developed the songs and everything. Oh man, he's yeah, ripping awesome. it. Totally yeah. ripping it on that song, um, Rio. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and so, uh, Dennis, one of our Patreon buddies, agrees that Rio is a great song. So, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> my sediments, exactly. Uh, Get it? See what I did there? Uh, where's my so, drinking noise? I'm going I'm to end this call right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is our first tiff. See you in four years. <laughs>
<laughs> Actually, the geology flannel kiss could have her own geologic time periods. It was the, uh, nice. the original period, and we're in like the reboot now. Okay, Devonian period, everyone. Uh, so, so we're going to talk about some uh, some red sandstones are going to be really important. Um, so let's go once again. A lot of this stuff happened in England, all right? And so in Devonshire, geologists in the 1830s they started seeing these corals that. I mean, they knew they were corals. They looked like corals, but they're like, yo, these things, this thing, any kind of coral that we got today, there's something's, something's going on here. And uh, they, were, they were looking, they found uh, tabula corals and uh, rugose corals. And so like, well, it's, it's a coral, but these things definitely are not alive anymore. So this whole thing's kind of sort of, yes, it was very, very strange looking corals. And so, uh, and, and also this rock in, um, that they were looking at in Devonshire was, it was this red sandstone and it had all sorts of fluvial features or river features in it, like uh, gravel bars, blah, I can't say that weird, gravel bars, point bars, ripple marks, uh, migrating channels, all this fun stuff. And so you know what they called this red sandstone? <laughs> yeah, I love it. The old red sandstone. Yeah. <laughs> the old red sandstone. Very proper. The old red sandstone. <laughs> that was my nickname in high school. <laughs> they um they also sometimes refer to the Devonian as the age of fishes. Yes, that's oh. not, you know I didn't have anything about fish in my in, in my notes, so well, I'm very happy that you uh yeah, you brought they, that up. They diversify there. Yeah, in lots the of yeah. So. Uh, isn't that, uh, let's see, sharks showed up in the Devonian. Does that sound about right? I think that does Ish. sound right. I know ammonites and trilobites and brachypods. Okay. What, what more do you want? Yeah. That's, and lo lots of sounds, lots like a, sounds like a party. Lots yeah. and lots of fish scales. Yeah. yeah sharks, might, or sharks might actually be. I thought sharks were Solari, weird, were, were they? Would they be slur? We should look, fact check this before we start spewing out. Yeah, what do you? Uh, sharks, sharks do the come about in the early Devonian. All right, I'm happy that I was correct. Okay, even a blind squirrel finds a nut. All right, so, yeah. all right, so we're in this old red sandstone. I'm sorry, the old red sandstone. <laughs> um, that's gonna get real old real fast. <laughs> Ooh, actually. just like the red sandstone. There's a little controversy. There might be some sharks in the Silurian. <gasps> oh. There's scale-like features found in the Silurian, but there's teeth found in the Devonian. Let's fight over this. Yeah. And not be friends anymore. Yeah. Yeah. On, on something none, on the three of us know nothing about. Yeah. <laughs> we just pick a yeah. side. Pick a side. <laughs> <laughs> Ride or die. Is, isn't that what politics is about? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Nope, not going there. Uh, All right. Um, so, okay. So now we're in this old red sandstone, and geologists, um, they started looking at these, they started finding these uh, related uh, corals, but they were less developed, um, like less, they're, they're more primitive, I guess you could say, or less developed. Um, so they started finding these less developed, or these more primitive corals in rock that was under the old sand, old red sandstone. All right. And then above the old red sandstone, guess what happened to the corals? They developed? They developed, exactly. Oh, what? The more developed corals were found above the old red sandstone, all right? Did not so, see that coming. You know, it's <laughs> one of those things. So uh, these geologists back in, you know, 19, 19, excuse me, the 1830s were able to correlate the old red sandstone of North Britain and marine limestones of Devon to be of the same age, which they called Devonian. And the person who uh, coined the term Devonian, good friend of the show, Adam Sedgwick, once again. So he's he is. Wow. Cambrian and Devonian. He's, just, Dude. he's like the Forrest Gump of geology. Yeah, right? He just keeps showing up at the right spot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so Devonian comes from Devon or Devonshire. Um, not sure. Anyway, that's, that's the, the origin of it, where they're describing the old red sandstone. That's pretty cool no, noting, but I, I, when all you're taking are features, how do you know that the old red sandstone and the limestone are the same age? You need to look at the corals. Okay. You see that, you see that like 
so basically the, that diversification so all the stuff they're saying all the premature or undeveloped corals were pre-devonian uh it doesn't or say just that. early it just said that that's they just used i think they lumped uh, maybe maybe early it didn't go into my, my source that i was reading didn't go into like details about that no 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 that, that that's all I, I just find it interesting like you know ba you know sometimes like obviously these are different bases too you know just because you have red sandstone and you have coral they're you know they're two different depositional environments so how would you even think to lump them together yeah it seems like this old red sandstone was um kind of like this buffer between marine units okay and um below it they found primitive corals above it they found more advanced corals Pretty and cool. that's that's where that's the Devonian grouping. All right, moving up. Next period, it's Carboniferous. Oh, this and gotta be I know for a fact. Favorite. Yes, that's what just what I was gonna say. <sighs> Jesse loves himself some Carboniferous periods. I <clears throat> I like the North American. That's, oh, we could talk uh, about we could talk about that. There's some controversy about that. That's yeah. I do Ooh, love me some Carboniferous. Who wants to call it Carboniferous when you can call it Mississippian or Pennsylvanian? Yeah, I do. Uh, I mean, it it's got a lot going on. It's great. It's a great time period. <laughs> it, 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 honestly, it's it, you know on the you know the Geologic Society of America timescale, it's the only period that's kind of broken up. Yeah, into you know, different chunks. Usually your period is just your period. You know, your Cretaceous, Jurassic, Triassic, Permian, whatever. But on the geologic time scale, it actually says Carboniferous and it's broken in half. Well, not directly in half, but it's broken. It's broken into Mississippian or Pennsylvanian. So I don't know. It's again, science coming up with a compromise. Yeah. Yeah. Or what Jesse thinks is just wrong. <laughs> I'm wrong here. No. no, they're wrong. I don't think that's possible. Carboniferous, marboniferous is what I think you said. <laughs> so um, I know that you can't like pick what kid you love the most, right? But Jesse, if you had to pick between the Ordovician and the Carboniferous, ooh, yeah. oh man, oh. is he feeling uncomfortable about this one? <laughs> wow. Why would you do that? Yeah, look at the sweats beating up on his yeah. forehead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love each of them equally. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'll have to think about that and get back to you never. Uh, <laughs> get back to you. All right. So the Carboniferous is named. It's, it's known for its coal deposits, all right? Um, geologists lumped. Uh, these coal seams of Europe, the coals of Roar, which is R U H R. You guys want to look up where Roar is while I'm going through this? I didn't get the chance. It's in Germany. It's, Germany, it's, okay. Yeah, it's the major um, like, industrial valley of Germany. Oh, okay. Uh, that's yeah, we do. Part of the reason why, because all the coal. Oh, Germany's going to be very important also once we get into Mesozoic time. Um, uh, let's see, coal seams of Tyne, T Y N E. Any of you guys know where that's from? England. Is that, that sounds like it's a British term, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm just these... going to listen from now on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like uh, Newcastle upon Tyne. It's a river in England. Okay, okay. So essentially all over, all over Europe, uh, they were seeing these coal seams. And so that's, that's how this grouping got lumped together. Um, the coal laid on top of, throwback, the Devonian old red sandstone. Ah. So like uh, on top of the old red sandstone, there's just ah. a crap ton of coal. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, um, in Europe, yes. What about Europe? In North, it, it's on the coals on top of the old red sandstone. In North America, the coal is on top of marine limestone. Oh, and that's why we make these divisions. You do get red beds at the upper part of what we call the Mississippian. So the Mississippian is defined by having these marine limestones. That's why we'd make this division. And Got then it. the Pennsylvania, where you find all the coal in Pennsylvania. Um, so you can see this division. Mm, and then you distinctly okay. see the Devonian below mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. So there is this, this, this separate section that you don't see in Europe. Hmm. Fun fact. Interesting, interesting. Um, where, uh, Sorry. yeah, and so that was 
this well the reason they're talking about the you know this 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 these deposits that are on top of the old red sandstone is because these guys were in england so that's what that's where the whole geologic time scale kind of had its birth and so they really didn't care about anyone i shouldn't say they didn't care about anyone else but that's what they were focused i take that back they're focused on um on the european geology all right um okay carboniferous was coined by william connie bear and William Phillips in 1822. And uh, the old Billy squared. <laughs> <laughs> William? William. <laughs> so, um, uh, oh, another fun fact about the Carboniferous period, it was the first of the modern system names to be employed. So I guess it was just, is, I, 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 I kind of take that as it was, is probably the easiest to lump together because of all the distinct coal that was or all the widespread coal deposits that came about during this time period. So yeah. I, that's my opinion. Why, why it was the first was basically, like, can, oh, can we, can we use this stuff? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is the carboniferous. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's that to me, in my opinion, that's, that's why it was the first. Cause it was just like, cause coal is a very distinctive rock and it's, you don't have to be a geologist to see, to be able to, you know, spot coal in outcrop. Um, okay, so car carboniferous, uh, known for its coal-bearing rocks. I it's also. Uh, that's a, I have a question for you, Jesse, real quick. Yeah. Does coal outcrop often? Yes. Okay. I was just yeah, wondering, yeah. like, if you had like a forest fire or something, would it? Yeah. So burn I mean, the story and is get buried the, the, and then the, not outcrop. Yeah. The the story and it may be apocryphal or not, but. Um, that we were told, you know, <clears throat> as school age children, um, anthracite coal, which is hard coal, uh, found in northeastern Pennsylvania, it, so it was discovered in Pottsville, we're like right north of Pottsville. And the, the, there was a trapper who was in the woods trapping, hunting in the, <laughs> in the late 1700s. Very good. <laughs> his, name, uh, his name was Nico Allen. And he made like a campfire and he went to bed and he woke up and like the side of the, the broad mountain was on fire. Whoopsies. Made fire <laughs> the scene. So, and that's sort of led to the discovery of the anthracite fields in, in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Oh, how about that? There's also, have you guys ever heard the story of the burning Brule formation or the, the Brule formation out in, I know it outcrops in South Dakota. I don't know if it goes into Wyoming or anyways. And so it's in that region of the United States and the burning brule is known because, or it's called the burning brule because it's on fire and it's been on fire for a really long time. In fact, when the story that I heard when Lewis and Clark were going across the, um, across the United States, uh, there were some, some native Americans that were with them and they said that thing's been burning, you know, they're like, oh my God, the, the, you know, this outcrops on fire. You can see the smoke coming out of it. And I think I, I believe I saw this burning grill formation with, you can see the smoke coming out of it. I want to say I did see it many moons ago. Um, but um, yeah. And the native Americans said, oh, this thing's like always been burning. This is, this is nothing new. Right. <laughs> and it's hypothesized that like a lightning strike um, ah, set it ablaze okay. and it's just huh. been burning for a really, really long time. Um, and then there's everyone's favorite call scene that's on fire. Good old Centralia. Really? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, but my, I, I guess my question was, like, just naturally occurring coal seams, if they did catch fire like that, like the Brule or, you know, Centralia mm -hmm. or Pottsville, um, would, would they, they eventually, like, burn themselves to the point where, you know, essentially it's almost a, a method of erosion, right? They're, it's just kind of yeah. going away and then it gets buried by stuff that's not going to catch fire. and yeah, It probably puts it out, yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, one of the reasons Centralia keeps burning – is because you have all these coal shafts feeding it out. Uh, oh, out. that's where the oxygen's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that that was all. I don't I know. I wasn't the, sure. That ooh. was just a weird thing. I thought. Yeah. Was. Yeah. But uh, because I'm thinking, like, yeah, if you go up the one highway up through Pottsville, you can see like three different coal seams. Yeah. Usually, I mean, okay. You see a. I've seen a lot of coal seams in Kentucky. There's a lot of like. Um, deltaic deposits out there and yeah. just see the, the coal stringers going through and they're not very big like you know maybe yeah. like i don't know one or two feet in width yeah but are, are these in like modern road cuts though yeah yeah right yeah that's what i'm saying i'm saying in like naturally occurring like hmm. mountainous yeah region. obviously it's hard to even 
imagine something like that? Uh, because if it had coal, chances are it was exploited. Yeah. But that's all. All right. I'll, I'll let it go. Just carry on. Um, first. <laughs> so, uh, Actually, Dennis had two good questions here. Um, <laughs> they're uh, one of our, our Patreon listeners. He asked, uh, I guess back about the, the um, we talked about in the, in the Carboniferous, we have the Mississippian and Pennsylvanian, and he goes, are they called subperiods? Now, uh, the Mississippian and Pennsylvanian, from what I've seen, they just call them straight up periods. Is that what you guys yeah. have seen? That's yeah, what I've like, seen. On yeah. the geologic time scale, they kind of cram they say Carboniferous and then they show it's like they take the period column and split it in half. But yeah. Now this was 15 years noticed. ago. I was always taught that the international is Carboniferous and then yeah. the United States was Mississippi and Pennsylvania. Yeah. So, so. it technically would go. Um, um, yeah. You, would, you wouldn't even say Carboniferous. It would just be Mississippian and De Pennsylvanian. So it go like Devonian, Mississippian, Pennsylvanian, Permian. Right. Uh, so, uh, um, I don't. I, I think instead of calling them sub periods, they just kind of like share. I think they're just space. straight straight up period. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just <laughs> a little bit of controversy. It's not the first time in geology we've had multiple names for the same thing. All right, so that's the Carboniferous period. Um, so that was the first one named back in 1822, and then finally the end of the Paleozoic era. We're at the Permian period. All right, so. Um, Another one named by uh, Roderick Murchison. Stop uh, it. Really? Guys, yeah, yeah. They're just like, they're just all over the place. It's, I just want to double check my notes here. Um, it says Roderick Murchison named the Silurian. Yep, yeah. Roderick Murchison named the Silurian and then also named the Permian period. So look at that. So Murchison versus Sedgwick. The two for two. Two versus, or I guess uh, the score is two to two, right? Sedgwick named two periods. Murchison named two periods. Look at these guys. I want to. I want to know like what other people tried to name it, and these are the names that stuck. Like, oh yeah, like what got lost in history? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Like I want to. I want to be at like the old timey lectures where someone's like, "We should call this the fishy philosophers," and people are like, That's <laughs> "Terrible, sit down." Uh, that was the first. That was the first. That's me making a Latin name out of fish. It's it's very good ichthyology or whatever no uh, you, you you watch there's probably some dude who came up with some perfectly organized like yeah this is period one this is period two this is period three like something that would be totally simple to remember and organized and like you know just very intuitive nope we're gonna go with these weird welsh tribe names <laughs> We need we need some some Mendeleev who had a who had a dream about it and could exactly work it. <laughs> yep. exactly because isn't that the were you the one who told me the story about like, yeah 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 he had a dream and he woke up he's like oh my god that's how the periodic table of elements is going to be it's going to be <laughs> I got yeah. it I got it because there's been some there were some wacky ways before him to organize the elements right sure everybody like, noticed that there was a, a periodicity kind of to it but he was mm -hmm. the one who really yeah. figured it out so they're like yeah. what can we what can we get to turn into gold we're just trying to be smurfs. alchemists here yeah. burning some smurfs yeah you know that's why gargamel was after smurfs wait really i don't know this yeah you didn't know that yeah gargamel was after smurfs because it took like three smurfs to make uh to turn like apples into gold or something i, turn, uh. I think you needed like smurfs you needed smurfs i don't know if it was three smurfs but you needed smurfs to turn uh lead into gold I need to get into the backstory of Smurfs. I feel like cartoons back in the day were really trippy and really out there. Like, <laughs> I was watching, man, I was watching, um, I had a side note, I know we're getting, getting off topic, but I was watching Alice in Wonderland, the Disney version, um, the other yeah. night. And man, that thing is so weird. It's yeah. just like, yep. what's, because uh, my girlfriend's reading the uh, reading the, the book Alice in Wonderland, so I guess she's watching the the Disney movie to to follow along with the book, and um, it yeah, was just it uh, it, it is true. Smurfs live in giant mushrooms, right? Yeah, I mean, I how about that? More. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, who knew it was about genocide though? Jeez. Well, the the Smurfs always outsmarted guess, Gargamel. Yeah, that's true. and his cat Asriel. So. Wow, you're really into you know all these. This is yeah. Wow, I'm Saturday mornings, baby. 
I do wow. know, like, uh, when were the Smurfs? What was it? The eighties? We're dealing with all. What was Steve a kid yeah. in the forties? Jeez. <laughs> but uh, give me, give me a nickel for the Nickelodeon. <laughs> so, I was in the Underland in the theater. First of- <laughs> uh, wasn't what's the what's the lady Smurf's name? I don't know. We're getting way. Wasn't she a plant by Gargamel? I've heard that conspiracy theory where she. Oh, was- I don't know. Uh, it was from eighty-one to eighty-nine. Uh, wow, two hundred and fifty-six episodes. Wow. Okay. All anyway. right, let's let's get back on track here, people. A fun little side in, note about inclu- in- excluding three cliffhanger episodes and seven specials. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. What's a cliffhanger episode? What is it like? They just never give you the answer for it? like what no, happened. It, like th- this is every episode on TV is a- like back in the eighties, prior to. VCRs being prevalent, they couldn't really have cliffhangers for cartoons because you couldn't have a very well developed storyline that went from week to week to week because you never knew if the kid watched the week before. So it was just all these like super basic, the story always reset, the cartoon always reset. Like it, it was very hard for them to build on a storyline and build it and build it and build it. Because you couldn't guarantee that the children had seen the week before, and you couldn't uh, tape it, you okay, couldn't okay, DVR okay. it, you couldn't do any of that stuff. Oh, I see, I see. So they're just so kind of catering to their audience, saying like, "I don't know when these, these kids might watch the show once a month or something." A- exactly. So I got you. I got you. Now cartoons are like a little more in depth. They have a little more structure, storyline, yada yada yada. Yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. There you go. Not only you get the history of the geologic time scale, the history of, <laughs> history of cartoons, cartoons in the United States. So we go from a very intellectual topic to <laughs> the Smurfs. Hey, we have it all here at the Geology Flowercast, exactly. ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. So the Permian period. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Roderick Murchison uh, coined this term in 1841. You guys know what uh, the Permian's named after? I, I will say I do. But I do now. I'm going to admit my. Can I? Can I? I don't want to steal your thunder. No, you just been doing it all night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, go ahead. So <clears throat> I always thought, and this is sort of foolish on my part. I should have. Okay, known. I like where this is going. Should have known better. <laughs> <laughs> so the main uh, oil and gas producing area in Texas, Permian Basin, is called the Permian Basin. And I think I always assumed that all of that exploration for oil and gas led them to define that layer. Like it was called the Permian Basin. But I've learned tonight that That's I am it. wrong. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, didn't, they don't like naming things after areas in America. They yeah. don't. They've we, literally made us just stop. talked about. Yeah, yeah. there's no golden <laughs> spike, no golden spike in uh, in Pennsylvania or Mississippi. I'm gonna just go up there with a pyrite spike because I can't afford a gold spike. <laughs> so that's the thing. <laughs> the uh, gold spike. let's see, it's the uh, the uh, the whatever the international group of stratigraphers are. Yeah, uh, wherever the type area is that that these like um these time periods were named after. They put a golden spike in there, right? And so yeah. they they refuse to they refuse to acknowledge the Pennsylvanian and Mississippi. Yeah. Period. So the 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 golden spike, the the golden spike you can go. They say if you want to know There's a physical this, golden spike, yes, yeah. in, the, in the rock. Yeah. They want if you want to know what the boundary looks like, like the ideal boundary between these periods or stages or whatever, and they have places set out. They give you the GPS coordinates. You go out there, and there'll be a marker. In the, in, in the stratigraphy, in the layers of rock. That says, this is it. This I got one. The ages change. We should have our own thing with the geology flannel cast, and we'll just leave a flannel shirt behind. This is, it. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the type location. No, the we're red, gonna, we're gonna the red lumberjack sticker. flannel is here. <laughs> <laughs> this must be it. No, but you can, if you get like a, you know, like just your typical periodic uh, geologic time scale is going to have the golden spikes. But if you end up buying, and I have it on my shelf somewhere, like the actual book, the geologic timescale, it, it, it shows you where the golden spikes are, 
where to find them in, in on the planet, I guess. So, and they're, they're, they're all in Europe, right? Uh, no, there, no, there's a few in America now. Oh, are there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I think they're, they're more of, modern. Yeah, now. and younger, I should say. They're and they're always they meet every year or two and they discuss about placement because they're not all placed, not all the stages and and some of the some of the periods don't have a golden spike. They're still in like uh, debate. Yeah. Over where to where exactly to put. Yeah, where's the best? Where uh, yeah. No, it's locality. it's hard. I mean, like I, you know, I've I've been at Alcrops where you know one formation just kind of grades into another formation and it's just like oh well like you, yeah. you walk in, you don't see a specific spot where it ends you know it just kind of grades into something else and you're like oh i mean you know after walking whatever a little bit you can see the difference but yeah sometimes it's tricky to figure out like you can't in geology can't always pinpoint um you know, the ends of of these rock formations or these time periods or you know stuff like that yeah and so they'll <clears throat> like they'll they'll go through and especially these ones that were older and, and sort of defined older they'll like there's no there's no golden spike in the end of the the cambrian but they have candidate sequences mm -hmm. okay to, to to put them um and so they yeah they're still arguing over the candidate sequences but yeah there's a bunch um it's a lot of Europe, but there's, I'm just looking here. You got the list? Yeah, the U.S., China. Um, <clears throat> Where in the U.S. are these spikes? Anywhere near us? Yeah, um, the, honest, right? the, yeah, so the division between, well, there's no division between the Pennsylvanian and the Mississippian, but the first stage of the Pennsylvanian is in Nevada. Okay. Which? Bacturian? Next time we go to Vegas, we'll go check that out. Yeah. Yeah. Bash Bashkirian. Bash Bash yeah. All right. So let's let's keep on moving on here. We got we still got a lot to go through. Um so let's <laughs> finish up the Permian period here. Okay, so we know Roderick Merchinson, he got his second um uh second locality named or his second uh time period named after it wasn't after the Permian Basin in this with the oil. It was after the Perm region in Russia, in the Ural Mountains. Yep, I was. And there's actually a um, an epic within the Permian. I th I was reading uh, within the Permian period that's named specifically after the Urals, or it, it has the word Ural in it. Um, be with S. You see that, Jesse? Are you looking at this? Uh, yes. No, there's an epic named after Sizurlian. Yeah, it's Sizur. Siz Sis I, I guess is your uh, yeah. yeah yeah that's one that's named after the ural mountains yep okay um the western right. and, slopes of the urals between yeah. and kazakhstan yeah so um what orogeny created the urals i think it's it's a weird one because isn't it uh the the orientation of the urals isn't it all like yeah it's, it's there's a lot it's a little wonky i don't know anything about the urals i, I, I can't either. talk on it the collision of uh, the eastern edge of Laurasia with the young, sort of weak continent of Kazakhstania. Kazakhstan is Ooh. not weak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a, uh, what was that, that Seinfeld episode? Yeah. Ukraine is not weak. Sis <laughs> yeah. uh, in that stage, uh, or it's an epic of the Permian. Mm -hmm. It's the appearance of beetles. Whoa. Yep. Beetles, I didn't know that. Beetles and flies. Beetles are my least favorite arthropod. Yeah. Fact. I have a story about beetles. Oh, dear. Yeah. I had a beetle stuck in my ear. I had to go to the emergency room. Uh, <laughs> nope. And no. let me tell you. It's as much fun as it sounds, all right? <laughs> um, I want to hold your hand. The worst yeah, was... Well, I kept hearing the over and over and over. And over. <laughs> That's, yeah, there's, there's four of them with weird haircuts. They all have the same haircut. <laughs> no, I, I'll say that I don't want to get too much into detail, but it was excruciating pain. And the worst was they had to, they had to kill the beetle before 
they basically had to suffocate this beetle before they took it out. They're worried about it doing damage to my eardrum. And they didn't tell me was that when any living organism dies of suffocation, it doesn't go out without fighting. And this thing was going buck wild in my ear as it was dying. It was the least. I'm getting chills. All right, let's, it was, let's talk about something. <laughs> it was, he's, that was the worst night of my life. Um, <laughs> I was like 19 years old. All right. Um, oh, that's, I'd, I'd sleep with earplugs for the rest of my life. No, yeah, it, was, right? it was just, I, I happened to like the beetle. It was a summer night. I was in a car and the, the windows were open and it flew into the side of my head oh. and I smacked it and it got lodged in my ear when I went to smack it. What are the odds? Oh, I can awful. tell you. I, <laughs> one in a million. One in a million shot right there. Oh, it was, it's, I'll tell you what though. I went into the, emer- I was in and out of the emergency room in 45 minutes. It was wow. just like, get them, get them. Get, yeah. <laughs> there was, uh, it was longer, long, there's, there's a whole story behind it, but. Um, okay, was, I, I think there was, was like, a, there was a house episode about that. Some guy was running around crazy. Oh. I thought he was on meth, but it, no, it was just like, it was like a cockroach. Like a roach. That, I, I have a yeah. buddy that's, uh, that's a doctor and he used to do um, ER shifts in South Carolina. And there's a lot of roaches running around South Carolina. It's hot in there. Um, and he said it happened all the time. People get roaches stuck in their ear. Like, it's really not that big of a deal. Well, I mean, Ugh. it is to the person, but yeah, to the right. doctors, they're like, ah, just, you got another roach in the ear. All right. So we're in the carbon, em- that's carbon. <laughs> <laughs> Permian, Permian period. We're in the Permian period. Uh, Roderick Murchison in 1841 was describing this, named it after the Permian region um, in um, in Russia near the Urals. All right, and so basically, make a long story short, uh, Roderick Murchison was just kind of just describing the rock assemblage that sat on top of the Carboniferous units, and that's pretty much all he was doing. That's that's how he lumped those together, just sitting on top of Carboniferous stuff. But no, most notable, though, is at the end of the Permian, gentlemen, everyone's favorite extinction. Um, basically, a lot of stuff died at the very yeah. top of, of what Murchison defined as the Permian. Stuff got real. It got real, real. Um, every, two, just about every, everything died. Yeah. It's why, called, why did it happen? Ooh. Oh, that's, we may stop talking if we... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> If we have this uh, conversation, um, there was a quote wave of death. I've also heard this. Uh, this is the worst mass extinction event that is recorded on Earth's history. It's known as the Great Dying, and I think that's an amazing name for a metal band. Yeah. I think there's actually album. Someone has an album called The Great Dying. I want to say some like Maybe. ridiculous like thrash metal band or something. Yeah, but. <laughs> but we're all pretty certain it was uh, dark matter, right? Dark matter, sure. Why not? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was no, a doing... mini black hole. Yeah. A black hole the size of a golf ball you know, came su- within supernovas. That's what it was. Multiple yeah. supernovas. Yeah. No. So that, that wasn't at the end Permian, was it? No. Yeah. That was Devon- that was, oh, that was Devonian. We were talking about yeah. the other week. Yeah. Um, oh, no, but all right, I, so, I do believe we talked about at, in a previous podcast. I'll have to look it up. Uh, oh, we had one about mass extinctions, I think. Yeah. yeah. It was mass extinctions coinciding with waves of dark matter oh that was with galaxy. um yeah what was the name of that uh that guy no oh, i don't want to name it i was so <laughs> the golf ball uh, size black hole or was that what you were saying no no no, <laughs> <laughs> no the golf ball size black hole is supposed to be planet x that's the ninth planet they think it may not be it may not be a, i listen this is all speculation all right don't Look, be like oh the geology guy told me that there's a golf ball size black hole I know it's just it's no. It's I'm, a, all, I'm not for black holes, but I'm all in for Planet X. It's there. Yeah. It's Black, it's a Planet hypothesis. Nice. Okay, so uh, the end. Per- <laughs> okay. The end Permian. I'm trying to stay on track, people. No the end, end Permian. End Permian extinction. Uh, like three quarters of amphibians died. Uh, half of the fish and invertebrates. See you later. Um, and maybe even ninety six percent of all marine species. Just that's it. Game set and match. See you later. <laughs> The fat lady has sung goodbye. So that's the end of the Paleozoic era. So the Paleozoic era now, here's how this thing got lumped together. They basically took these groupings that started off from the Cambrian, Adam Sedgwick with his Cambrian period. That's where we saw the the life explosion, right? Everything starts just like, boom, that's the beginning. And then 
the most badass extinction period, extinction event that we ever have ever seen. That's the end. And so that's how the Paleozoic came about. That, that's the grouping from, from Billy, uh, literally the beginning of life. A lot of, a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff came on the scene in the Cambrian to the very end for a lot of stuff at the uh, end Permian. So that's, that's the lumping of the, uh, the Paleozoic. Oh, yeah, yeah. man. Um, I love this term. Um, so a lot of this stuff that I got, a lot of these facts for this podcast I got from the book Annals of a Former World by John McPhee. It's and I got the book right here. If you watch the YouTube, you can see the book. This is an <laughs> awesome book. I just, I've been, uh, I've been reading a lot from that. And that's where I got a lot of the stuff. I want to, um, sorry, continue. Um, so anyways, he just had a very, a uh, very poetic line in this book and uh, talking, talking about the Paleozoic era. And so here's, here's the quote I'd just like to read. Um, the sharp line of creation at the outset of the Cambrian had an antiphonal parallel in the, Cam in the Permian extinction. Did I pronounce it right? Antiphonal? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> you're on your own with that one. all right that's a heck of a quote chris <laughs> thank you <laughs> but yes you're right with the explosion of life and then essentially the explosion of death to bookend the paleozoic mm -hmm. yeah yeah speaking of yeah that's crazy huh what's crazy just the bookends like that Life, life begins, life ends. Bada bing, bada boom. Antiphenyl. Sorry. <laughs> Antiphenyl is how that word's pronounced. Shoof. Um, but yeah, that's, so that's, that's why they lumped the, the Paleozoic together. So um, ancient life. Now we can move this a little, we can move a little faster here. Um, I got some fun facts about the Mesozoic era. Should we do this or? Yeah. Uh, We're now about an hour 15 and hour 10 minutes in now. Oh, do you want to save the mezzo and the seno for the next one? It's up to you guys. You guys make the call now. Um, I got some, I don't know. What do you want to do? I, I'm, I can keep on going. That's, you guys getting tired? No. I mean, I'm exhausted. But. Yeah, I'm always, <laughs> I'm always tired. Constant. Constant. Yeah. I was gonna. I mean, we can keep going. We could also save. Well, maybe not. I was going to say. Save. I was going to say, we, let's see if we can knock out the, the mesozoic, right? Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to touch cenozoic because that's, too much going on. Too much going on. And maybe we'll have another one. The other bookends, Precambrian and Cenozoic. Yeah. Lump them, lump them together. Yeah. May, December, Romance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, so, let's, let's talk about middle life. Me here. Mesozoic. Yeah, middle life. Mezo, mezzo, mezzo, middle, middle. zoos, life. All right. So we'll start with the, there's, there's three periods Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. So let's start off with the Triassic period. Um, Triassic actually comes after the three rock formations this time period was, was named after. So there's three formations in Germany um, within um, basically the Black Forest region. We see these sandstones, limestones, and marly shales. Originally, this time period was named the Tria. Trias or Trias? I think it's T-R-I-A-S. Tr Trias? I think it's Trias. Sure. And Sure. 1834. So once again, the, you know, kind of early to mid 1800s by Frederick August von Alberti. You guys ever heard of him before? That name sounds familiar, but you guys ever hear of him? It sounds great. Von Alberti. That's a, that's a name and a half. Frederick yeah, August von Alberti. Um, and the three formations were the, by that name that, the, that are, um, that make up the Triassic period at this area. And it's, uh, these three formations are not global, they're local, um, but there's uh, the Bunter formation, which is brown sandstone and red beds. Uh, oh man, we're getting into some German pronunciations here. The Muschel, Muschel Kalk, I'm gonna skip that. And the Cooper. <laughs> I probably just <laughs> butchered those three. So anyway, so Triassic three, there's three formations when the Triassic period was described. There we go. All right. Moving on. The Jurassic period. You guys know this one, where it comes from? The Jura yeah. Mountains. The movie. Oh, sorry. Yes. Wrong. The movie <laughs> with. Me. Named after the movie. Yeah. Named after the movie with, um, who's that goofy actor? The really eccentric guy. Jeff um, Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> life uh, um, finds a way. <laughs> it's pretty good Jeff Goldblum right there. Is, yeah. All right. So Jur- Jurassic. Jurassic. Um, the European geologists were studying these massive limestones of the Jura. And uh, these are mountains of the western cantons of Switzerland and the France, Franche Comte. I don't know. We're basically on the France Swiss border, basically. I'm <laughs> really trying to spice it up there. <laughs> I'm doing a real good job here of, of uh, Franche Comte. I don't know. Someone's got, some some of our fr- uh, listeners from France are gonna be like, "We're done. We're unsubscribing from your yeah. podcast now." All right. So, Bonjour. Alexander von Humboldt. Von Humboldt was. Oh man, uh, that guy did so much. A lot of these guys did so much. What do you know him from? I mean, he did all of the oceanography. He was like hugely influ- influential. He was like this Prussian who just did. So he did a lot of, um, I know him from oceanography. Okay. <clears throat> Interesting. All right. That's a good yeah. segue for the next thing. But Oh, but he, he did a ton of stuff. He was like a, he did a lot of these expeditions and whatnot and went to the Andes early on. And he was like... He was, I want to say he was like the Einstein of his day and that people were like, this is the smartest guy who's alive right now. That's wow. pretty cool. But we kind of like forget about him now. Like we don't talk about him. Obviously we're talking about him. Hello, this is we're, the we're, premier geology podcast. We're bringing talk, him back. <laughs> talking we're about the back. ex-premier geologist. Yeah. So he did his work. This is in 1795, von Humboldt. Um, recognized these limestones and realized that they were not in the stratigraphic system that Abraham Gottlieb Werner or Werner talked about. Does that name sound familiar? Abraham Gottlieb Werner? I mean, only in that he was wrong. Yeah. He was a Neptunist. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Man, I was like, I know. Yeah, he was, he was, so the Neptunus was, it was, um, I mean, it wasn't like a, it was uh, Pharrell's band, right? The Neptunes back in the day. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh man, they were good. Um, So the Neptunus, it was a school of thought. And these guys believed that all rock came from these vast oceans. It all like kind of precipitated out of the oceans, but the whole concept kind of fell apart when geology and this guy, uh, Werner, um, uh, Abraham Gottlieb Werner, he was, um, he was one of the most uh, prolific or outspoken of the Neptunists, I guess you could say he was. He was like, like the kind of like the unofficial head of the Neptunists. Whenever they talk about the Neptunists, they always talk about this guy, Werner. Yeah, and he was, yeah. he was a staunch believer that all rocks came out of the oceans. It all precipitated out of the oceans. And he really dug his heels into the ground because they're basically like, yo, buddy. We're, we're seeing these volcanoes exploding, all right? <laughs> we're, we're physically watching these lava flows coming out of the volcano. I'm seeing this with my own eyes, all right? How do you explain that? And he was like, no, 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 the ocean. Like, used to be an ocean here. Don't worry about it. Uh, and then the other, the other, yeah, the other argument against the, uh, the Neptunus was, all right, buddy, where'd the oceans go? Where'd all your water go? And I think at that the point- The sky. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, um, so, but I didn't realize that Abraham Gottlieb Werner uh, put together like a, um, a basic stratigraphic system. Oh. And that's where, that's where von Humboldt, Alexander von Humboldt was like, yo, I got these limestones in the Jura Mountains and this is not in what Werner has in oh. his descriptions. So that's when, uh, so in 1795, Von Humboldt said that, and then in uh, 1799, Von Humboldt named it the Jura Kalkstein, um, named after the Jura limestone. Hmm. And then in 1829, um, oh, geez, a French name here, uh, Alexandre Brogniart published a survey and refined to the Jura Mountains. I'm sorry, he published a survey and referred my handwriting is horrible. Referred to the Jura Mountains as Terrains Jurassic with a Q. Ooh. And then Jurassic Ooh. came Jurassic. from there. I like it. Yes. Ooh. I'm going to call it that from now on. The, the Jurassic. J U R A S S I Q U E. Jurassic. All right. And then to wrap it up, the Cretaceous. Okay. 
Okay. Chalk. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I, there's actually a little bit of a story here. You guys know who named the Jurassic? No. Uh, Cretaceous? Cretaceous. I should. All right. So this is 1822. Now, here's a name for you. This guy's got like 16 names. J.J. Demelius de Hoy. Um, he was French. I uh, named this period after the White Cliffs of Dover, the Downs of Kent and Sussex, and chalky ground in Cognac and Champagne. It wasn't even, I mean, you're leaving out some of those names. It's J.J. It yeah, was what's J.J.? There's like... Yeah. Jean-Baptiste st- Julien. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Demelius? De, de de, de de He's Belgian. I don't... Oh, Belgian. Okay. Yeah. Ah, I said French. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, once again, his French just call him JJ. <laughs> that's a, I mean, that name is a like that's a mouthful. Like, what do you think kindergarten was like for that kid trying to trying to spell his name? He probably had a tutor. <laughs> like a yeah, he tutor looks, came looks to the smooth. house. Yeah. yeah. Um. So they found uh, basically they found all these chalky deposits all over the place in England, um, and uh, I guess. And then they, 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 they um, found more in Holland, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, and Poland. So like, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of chalk here. And so our buddy JJ <laughs> called it Le Terrain Cretace. Oh. Uh, it came from Latin, the Latin Creta for chalk. We talked about this in the last podcast. Yeah. And Very then cool. you guys know why the abbreviation K? We use K for Cretaceous? I thought it had to do with the fact that there was already the Cambrian and Carboniferous. So no, we're out of seas. <clears throat> German. Yes, wow. it's German. Uh, uh, Crede. K-R-E-I-D-E. Crede? 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 That's the German translation for chalk, and that's where the K huh. comes from. I had yeah. no idea. But, uh, I just assumed it was like, ah, oh, we already have a Cambrian, we already have a Carbon. Yeah. <laughs> Got enough C. Oh, let's yeah. just call K. <laughs> Place it up here a bit. I swear to God, that's what I thought. And then they use that weird C for the Cambrian, the C with the line yeah. In, yeah. in the middle. Like, where did that come from? What, like, now I know I... we're going to email, like, oh, here's the origin of that symbol. Yeah. <laughs> it, all I know it's is it's that definitely I... Latin or Greek because it's, it's in word. Check out formatting formula. Bullshit. Oh, <laughs> but uh, no, because I remember I had to I had to put it in my thesis a lot because I was yeah referring oh. to stuff. So yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah. All I know is that yeah, Cameron, you got to go into the stupid special character map. Uh, yep. with the, uh. All right. So then, um, and then uh, at the end of the Cretaceous, the dinosaur side, and that's it. So. Way to bury uh, the spoil- lead, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert. Here's um, one little fact. I'm, we're not going to talk about the Cenozoic. We'll do it. Cenozoic's going to be its own podcast because I'm actually happy we're calling it quits there because I <laughs> really wanted to go in depth about the different epics um, in the Cenozoic era. But do um, you guys know? Uh, let's see. Uh, why the. Um, uh, what, the, the divisions, how the Cenozoic era has been subdivided up. What do you mean? No. In, the, in the epics? Like for. <laughs> I'm yeah. hoping you tell us and you don't leave us on some sort of Smurf cliffhanger. So this is a Smurf cliffhanger here. Um, <laughs> no. Um, it is based on the percentages of molluscan species that survived into the present. Really? Mollusks? <laughs> <laughs> mollusks. Mollusks. Yeah, it's based on mollusks. You kidding me? No, that's, that's what it says in Annals of a Former World. I read it today. So what? Late it, last night. Is the Paleozoic mostly conodonts then? And then what? What's Suck. the Mesozoic? Uh, all right, this is a real. I'm, the Eocene three, in the Eocene, uh, three point five percent of the mollusks survived till today. Uh, Miocene, fifteen percent of mollusks survived. Uh, Pliocene, fifty percent of mollusks survived, and Pleistocene, ninety percent of mollusks live on. So that's and then those were the original ones, and those names came from Charles Lyell. Ah, um, uh, Chuck. He's, he's back. He's and, back, uh, baby. <laughs> Charles Lyell, uh, he came up with those names, and then there are some more problems about the names, and then to settle these problems, that's when they threw in the Oligocene and Paleocene in there. Um, so one last fun fact. I know where it's a, this is a little bit of a longer podcast, but I hope this is, everyone found this very informative. Um, I had a blast 
Um, that's the dorkiest thing I've ever said. Uh, <laughs> researching this, but we talked about this. I have. I want to do. I want to rescind a statement from the last podcast. I don't do this oh, that often. Corrections. Right? We're issuing corrections. We've like never to, been wrong before. This yeah. is. Weird. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right. We talked. I, I made a mistake on the last podcast. We. Re, I. I mentioned to Jesse. I think I mentioned to Jesse, but. I talked to Steve once in a while too. Uh, <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> um, no, I had mentioned in the last podcast that originally uh, I, I was uh, the the geologic time scale was broken up into like three or four units, and I mistakenly said that Triassic was one of the original eras, and that is wrong. As I mentioned, um, Triassic was not one of the three eras. Um, Triassic, like I said earlier, was named after three rock formations. Um, the orig originally, there was the primary era, secondary era, tertiary era, and quaternary era. So there are four eras. Oh. Yep. Uh, we got rid of primary and secondary. Tertiary is kind of hanging out there in limbo, and then it's still quaternary. Ah, nice. That's cool. where that, that comes from. All right. I will I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired after that. You've, you've talked about uh, Annals of the Former World, which is a, a good in. Um, I, this makes me think of, there's also another good book. Because Geologic Time is really interesting. Uh, Simon Winchester has a book called The Map That Changed the World, and it's about uh, William yes. Smith. We have a, a sort whole of podcast. Like, devoted to debtor's prison with William yeah, Smith. So this, yeah, that's one sure. of my favorite episodes. I still remember <laughs> recording that episode, us sitting around. Yeah. Debtor's prison, what? <laughs> um, that is episode nine from uh, May of 2014. Wow. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I know about the canal building. and Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and there's also a good one that came out a couple years ago, like recently. And it's called The Ends of the World. And it's I'm going to. Peter Brannon. And it's, um, it's about the five major extinctions. Oh, oh. did he try crack? Yeah. Nice. That's, that's all. I, that's, that's one. Page. For new listeners, they have no idea what you're talking about, Steve. <laughs> that's but, or, or division, Devonian, Permian. Concerned about some of Pete's, Pete's life decisions, life choices right now. Cretaceous. <laughs> that's how our, that. Jesse Thornberg taught me that. Huh. To remember the major extinctions. Yeah. Oh, dude, Pete tried crack. Ordovician, Devonian, Permian, Jurassic. Triassic, Cretaceous. Yeah. Huh. I like that. I've yeah. heard you guys say that before, but I've always dismissed it, but <laughs> you kind of sunk in this time. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, We'll do another, uh, we'll do, have to do another episode. Like I said, I think that'd be great. That'd be a lot of fun to really dive into pre-Cambrian time. Uh, man, we can talk about the, the origins of the oceans. Actually, that'd be a great segue. We had a, we had a new story uh, we were going to talk about today about a new theory about how the oceans formed. Maybe uh, we're going to hold off on that. But, uh, yeah. but, but uh, yeah, that sounds like uh, we'll do pre-Cambrian -pre time, then another one on, on um, the Cenozoic era. Well, we're going to have to wait a week because next week we got to – special yeah. episode uh so the podcast is going to come out yeah we gotta we gotta move some our uh, schedule around a little bit so the podcast next week is gonna we're gonna be releasing them on wednesdays now but um the podcast next week's gonna come out on thursday so it'll, it'll just be a, a day late but um it'll be a, it'll be well worth it yeah we got a little surprise for episode 60 um we hope you like it question mark <laughs> <laughs> It might be a train wreck. I don't know. We're trying something new. Yeah, we're we are trying some try something. We are going to try something new. It should be. It should be fun. But uh, yeah, we'll I'm going to do some research on this one too for next week. Yeah, I think so too. I think we might have to um, maybe point out some things. Point out some things. Figure out some ways to c cut some of the fat, if you will. You know, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I don't want to give away too much. So keep, said it keep in a previous episode, in, but on Twitter or Facebook. Or Instagram or MySpace, you know, wherever you get your news. MySpace. Yeah. yeah. MySpace. Tom's still sitting there waiting. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Friendster. 
<laughs> Friendster, I like it. Yeah, I think MySpace actually. I think Justin Timberlake actually bought MySpace. I think he's part owner. Yeah, yeah, I heard that too. Yeah, I don't know if I'd agree with his um, investments, but yeah, good for him. It's just being nostalgic, you know. Good when you have yeah. hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna buy the All right. Atari um, Corporation. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow yeah all right um, thanks everyone for listening uh <laughs> let's just end this now yes. and it's now uh i don't know you want to give give a final plug steve yeah formattingformula.com please check them out uh support at formatting formula if you need to email them about any of your formatting needs or check them out on youtube formatting uh youtube.com forward slash c forward slash formatting formula uh, we also have a Patreon account where you could support us at many different levels. We had a bunch of listeners listening to us live as we record all this goofy stuff happening. Um, you, you know, different, different tiers get different access to different things. So check out our Patreon. Um, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, MySpace. <laughs> really plugging this MySpace. <laughs> Um, oh, you know, we forgot to do today because we're the worst podcast hosts ever. Silence. <laughs> we forgot to announce the contest winners. We picked contest winners. Let's do it next episode for the special episode. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it for the special, special episode. All right. I, well, also, I haven't gotten any. I, I asked a bunch of people for some addresses. And I, I they've been coming in on Facebook. Have they? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't check it today. My bad. All right. Steve All is. Right. Uh, I we're figuring this out. We're figuring this out. I was crazy, out. crazy busy at work today. So we had uh, we had a meeting on Thursday. We picked winners. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we we're gonna announce the winners next week then. But if you're a winner, uh, you may or may not have been contacted by a certain someone with this podcast whose <laughs> initials are SP. Anyways, <laughs> our semester started this week. We're it's, yeah, it's been busy. It's a weird semester. It is. Um, all right. Well, thanks everyone so much for listening. Uh, I appreciate all the love and support from everyone. Um, thank you so much. We love you guys. And um, we will see you guys next week. Take care. Awesomely outrageous. Bye. -bye. Awesome.